Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, or afternoon, whenever you are watching this. We are so thankful that even though we are at home doing virtual learning this week, that we can still meet together for chapel. So would you join me in some songs this morning? We're going to start with Who You Say I Am. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, is free indeed. I'm a child. He has ransomed me, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Who the Son sets free, always free indeed. I'm a child. So that was our September song of the month. And now we are going to uh, sing our October song of the month, No Longer Slaves. Surround me with a song 
week we are going to sing one of my very favorite songs and it is called come thou long expected jesus we are now in the season of advent and that is um the time where we are preparing for jesus's birth and so come thou long expected jesus is uh, talking about preparing for his birth Expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins, release us. Let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Born thy people to deliver born a child and yet a king born to reign in us forever now thy gracious kingdom bring by thine own eternal spirit rule in all our hearts alone by thine all-sufficient merit raise us to thy glorious throne rejoice rejoice Rejoice, rejoice, glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God in the highest. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. Israel's strength and consolation, hope of all the earth thou art. Dear desire of every nation, joy of every longing heart. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. 
Good morning, guys. I hope you're doing well. I sure miss not worshiping um, in person with you, but I am thankful that we are able to worship together this way. So thank you for tuning in and for singing with us. Now, during this season, there is always a big debate that happens. And the big debate is, do you decorate for Christmas before Thanksgiving, or do you wait until after Thanksgiving to, to decorate? What did your family do this year? It's always a toss-up, but we are officially in December now, so we can enjoy all of the Christmas decorations and all of the uh, wonderful things that come with this season. And today for chapel, I am going to read to you one of my favorite Christmas books. It's a book called Why Christmas Trees Aren't Perfect. If you've been around GCA for a while, you very well may have heard me read this before, uh, but it is one that I, I love and I read every every year, um, and I hope that you enjoy hearing it this morning. They say that if you creep into an evergreen forest late at night, you can hear the trees talking. If you listen very carefully to the whisper of the wind, you can hear the older pines telling the younger ones why they will never be perfect. They will always have a bent branch here or a gap there. But long, long ago, all evergreen trees were perfect. Each one took special pride in branches that sloped smoothly down from pointed top to evenly shaped skirt. This was especially true in a small kingdom far beyond the Carpathian Mountains in Europe. Here the evergreen trees were the most beautiful of all. For here the sun shone just right, not too hot, not too dim. Here the rain fell just enough to keep the ground moist and soft so no tree went thirsty. And here the snow fell gently day after day to keep every branch fresh and green. Each year as Christmas approached, the Queen's woodsmen would search the royal evergreen forest for the most perfect, most beautiful tree. The one fortunate enough to be chosen would be cut on the first Saturday of Advent. It would, be the care it would then be carefully carried to the castle and set up in the center of the great hall. There it reigned in honor for all the Christmas celebrations. Out in the hushed forest, every evergreen hoped for this honor. Each tree tried to grow its branches and needles to perfection. All of them strained to have the best form and appearance. One tree, small pine, grew near the edge of the forest and promised to be the most beautiful of all. As a seedling, it had listened carefully to the older trees, who knew what was best for young saplings. And it had tried so very hard to grow just right. As a result, everything about small pine, from its deep sea green color to the curling tip of its evenly spaced branches, was perfect. It had, in fact, already overheard jealous whispers from the other trees. But it paid them no mind. Small Pine knew that if one did one's best, what anyone else said didn't matter. One cold night, when a bright full moon glittered on the crusty snow, a little gray rabbit came hopping as fast as he could into the grove of evergreens. The rabbit's furry sides heaved in panic. From beyond the hill came the howling of wild dogs and the thrill of the hunt. The bunny, his eyes wide with fright, frantically searched for cover. But the dark cold trees lifted their branches artfully from the snow and frowned. They did not like this interruption to their quiet evening when growing was at its best. Faster and faster the rabbit circled as, he, as the excited howling of the dog sounded louder and louder. And then Small Pine's heart shuddered. When the terrified rabbit ran near, Small Pine dipped its lower branches down, down, down to the snow. And in that instant, before the wild dogs broke into the grove, the rabbit slipped under Small Pine's evergreen screen. He huddled safely among the comforting branches while the dogs galloped by and disappeared into the forest. In the morning, the rabbit went home to his burrow, and Small Pine tried to lift its lower branches back up to their proper height. It strained and struggled, but the branches had been pressed down too long through the night. Oh well, Small Pine thought, no matter, perhaps the woodsman wouldn't notice a few uneven branches near the ground in a tree that was so beautiful. 
Several days later, a terrible blizzard lashed the land. No one remembered ever having so much wind and snow. Villagers slammed their shutters tight while birds and animals huddled in their nests and dens. A brown mother wren had become lost in the storm. With feathers so wet she could barely fly, she went from one large evergreen to another looking for shelter. But each tree she approached feared the wren would ruin its perfect shape and clench its branches tight like a fist. Finally, the exhausted wren fluttered toward Small Pine. Once more, Small Pine's heart opened, and so did its branches. The mother wren nestled on a branch near the top, secure at last. But when the storm ended and the bird had flown away, Small Pine could not move its top branches back into their perfect shape. In them would be a gap forevermore. Days passed and winter deepened. The packed snow had frozen so hard that the deer in the forest could not reach their tender ground moss, which they ate to survive. Only the older, stronger deer could dig through the icy snow with their hooves. One little fawn had wandered away from his mother. Now he was starving. He inched into the pine grove and noticed the soft, tender evergreen tips. He tried to nibble on them, but every tree quickly withdrew its needles so the tiny deer's teeth couldn't chew through them. Thin and weak, he staggered against small pine. Pity filled the tree's heart, and it stretched out its soft needles for the starving fawn to eat. But alas, when the deer was strong enough to scamper away, small, small pine's branches looked very ragged. Small pine wilted in sorrow. It could hear what the larger, still perfect trees were saying about how bad it looked. A tear of pine gum oozed from the tip of a branch. Small pine knew it could never hope to for the honor of being the queen's Christmas tree. Lost in despair, small pine did not see the good queen come with the woodsman into the forest. It was the first Saturday of Advent, and she had come to choose the finest tree herself because this was a special celebration year in the history of her kingdom. As the royal sleigh, drawn by two white horses, slowly passed the forest, through the forest, her careful eye scanned the evergreens. Each one was hoping to be the royal choice. When the queen sm saw small pine, a flush of anger filled her. How could such an ugly tree with so many drooping branches and gaps be allowed in the royal forest? She decided to have the woodsman cut it down and throw away uh, and nodded for the sleigh to drive on. But then she raised her hand for the sleigh to stop as she glanced at the forlorn little pine. She noticed the tracks of small animals underneath its uneven needles. She saw a wren's feather caught in its branches. And as she studied the gaping hole in the side and its ragged shape, understanding filled her heart. This is the one, she said, and pointed to small pine. The woodsmen gasped, but they did as the queen directed. To the astonishment of all the evergreens in the forest, small pine was carried away to the great hall in the castle. There it was, decorated with shimmering silver stars and golden angels which sparkled and flashed in the light of thousand glowing candles. On Christmas Day, a huge yule log blazed in the fireplace at the end of the great hall, while orange flames chuckled and crackled the queen's family, and all the villagers danced and sang together around small pine. And everyone who danced and sang around it said that small pine was the finest Christmas tree yet. In looking at its drooping, nibbled branches, they saw the protecting arm of their father, or the comforting lap of their mother. And some, like the wise queen, saw the love of Christ expressed on earth. So if you walk among evergreens today, you will find along with rabbits, birds, and other happy living things, many trees like small pine. You will see a drooping limb which gives cover, a gap offering a warm resting place, or branches ragged from feeding hungry animals. For as many of us, the leaves have learned that living for the sake of others makes us most beautiful in the eyes of God. As I was thinking about the story and picking what I was going to share, I could not help but think of our November chapel theme. And if you remember, our chapel theme was, A Child of God is Generous. And we read about a story of a little boy who was willing to share his lunch with a crowd of 5,000 people. And our verse this month comes from 2 Corinthians 9-7, which says, Each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And in today's story, 
We read about Small Pine, who certainly gave generously, and I believe also gave cheerfully. When the rabbit needed a safe place to hide, Small Pine offered shelter under its branches. Small Pine offered safe shelter to a wren during a terrible blizzard. And when a little fawn needed food, Small Pine stretched out its needles so it could eat. In doing this, Small Pine gave up the hope of being the perfect tree for the castle. And he even at first he was like, well, maybe not. And then he just knew and he heard. He heard what the other trees were saying about him. And at first the queen herself was angry and was ready to get rid of him. But then it described her as wise because she saw something special in this tree. She saw, as it said in the book, the love of Christ expressed on earth. And what is that love? I love what Romans 5, 8 tells us about that. Because it says God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God did not wait for any humans to be perfect enough to send Christ because he knew it would never happen. He sent Christ while we were still sinners. And as we go into this Christmas season, there is so much fun, so many fun things we do and so much that's worth celebrating and so much for us to enjoy. But let's not forget why we're celebrating. We're celebrating because a baby was born and one day that baby would give his life for us so that our sins would be forgiven. There's only one person that could make that happen and it was Jesus And so more than anything else we celebrate this season, let's celebrate that love that God gave us by giving us his son, the best gift that we could ever be given. Will you guys pray with me? God, I thank you so much for the time we had to to be in chapel together today. Lord, I thank you that um, you have given more for us than we will ever be asked to give and uh, that we will ever be asked to give. And God, I thank you for the ultimate gift of Jesus that you've given us. Thank you for um, his, your love for us. Thank you for his willingness to die on the cross so that we could have a right relationship with you. And as we go into this Christmas season, God, I just pray that you will keep our mind and our hearts on things that matter most, that we will remember what it is we're truly celebrating this season, and that is the gift of your son. God, we just love you so much, and we thank you for your love for us. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. All right, guys, have a great day. We'll see you next week.